In this series, I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to strip away all the complexity and hard graft and teach you how to cook amazing food standing on your head. That is amazing. Incredibly tender. From the kitchen novice to the budding chef, I'm going to give you the confidence, the recipes, and the insider knowledge to make you a much better cook. Slice round, wasting nothing. I made my name cooking in some of the world's most demanding kitchens. Uh, That's nice. You make it the Belmars before service. Yeah. In my restaurants, I expect perfection. Every plate has to be worthy of a Michelin star. And every time you make it, yeah. you taste it as well. Yeah, yeah. Every day it changes. Yeah. Now, I'm going to show you some simple and accessible recipes for fantastic food that you can cook easily at home. Mm. Incredible. I'll be holding you by the hand. It's getting better and better and better. Teaching you everything from how to cook on a budget to baking, real fast food, and my ultimate feast recipes. This is the only cookery course you'll ever need. Welcome to my ultimate cookery course. Packed with cooking tips, information, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. Right, now it's all about cooking with chilli. For me, chilies are an incredible ingredient in the cook's arsenal, capable of transforming dishes, adding excitement, heat, and a wonderful taste. I'm going to show you how to get the grips with their intense flavour. First up, red mullet with sweet chilli sauce. Cooking is about being adventurous and having the confidence to go off piste and being a little bit more daring. So when you start combining peanuts, chilli flakes and this amazing fish, red mullet, trust me, you're in for an amazing treat. We're going to make a really nice, light, sweet chilli sauce. First off, your chilli. Off with the top in half. And those seeds inside are very powerful. Incredibly hot, but full of flavour. Garlic. Two cloves of garlic. Slice the garlic nice and thin, so it helps to puree the chilies in the pestle and mortar. Garlic in. Touch of salt. A little touch of sugar in. And then start grinding. Push down first. The salt and the sugar really helps to puree the chilli and the garlic. Fish sauce, always a base to a chilli sauce. Two tablespoons in, and a touch of rice wine vinegar. Fish sauce gives it the saltiness. The vinegar gives it a nice acidic wake up. Three tablespoons of olive oil. Nice. Mix that up. Beautiful. Look at it. The colours. Incredible. Now, spring onions. I want the texture and the crunch. Spring onions in. The coriander. Slice it once. In. Fresh lime. And that goes brilliantly with the red mullet. Just really wakes up the chilli, the garlic, and reminds the sauce that we're serving it with fish. Now taste. Mmm. Wow. That's delicious. Look at that. Beautiful. The longer that chilli sauce sits there, the better it gets. Now, for the peanuts and chilli, that's going to coat the top of the red mullet. Peanuts in. Salt in. That helps to really grind the peanuts down. Some beautiful dry chilli flakes. Creates a nice sort of warm heat. I'm using fresh chilli for the sauce, but dried chilli flakes for the coating, which will really crunch up when cooking. Just a little bit of the coriander. Mix the coriander in to the peanuts. And look, I like them quite textured. I don't want them too small as a powder, otherwise they'll burn, but crushed lightly. To coat the fish with the chilli and peanut seasoning, in a separate bowl, beat two eggs along with a splash of fish sauce. Take your fillet, lay in your red mullet, dip it in, shake up your peanuts, and then in. And make sure you push that down, cover that red mullet. Oh, beautiful. Now make sure that pan's really nice and piping hot. If you put the fish in and the pan's cold, all those wonderful peanuts and chilli is just going to slide off the fish. So we need to sear it in and get it nice and crisp. In and lay away from you. Beautiful. If the pan starts getting a little bit too hot, get your olive oil and just place another teaspoon of olive oil around the outside so it starts to heat up 
as it hits the centre and it really helps to stay so much more in control and turn nice and gently. You want that nice sort of toasted, sautéed crispness which adds a really lovely flavour. Tilt the pan and just baste the top of the red mullet with that really nice piping hot olive oil. You've got that really nice roasted crunch and it goes brilliantly with that soft sweetness of that fish inside. Gas off and just leave them sitting in there and finish with lime and just go over each one. Now, we we'll take them out. And the sauce, a touch on the bottom and the tail of each fish. Now to round that off, serving some fragrant rice, sauteed broccoli, amazing. And there you have a delicious peanut encrusted red mullet with a wonderful sweet chilli sauce. Cooking with chillies isn't all about blow your head off heat. This dish uses the exciting taste of a chilli but has a deliciously elegant and subtle flavour. As you become more confident using chillies, you'll find they can transform your cooking. Chillies are a great way of making dishes exciting and vibrant. Here are three quick recipes that are full of flavour and come with a kick. First up, pasta with tomatoes, anchovies and chillies. For the spicy sauce, slice anchovies and garlic. Next, dried chillies. Great for keeping in the cupboard to add a hit of heat on demand. Then add the anchovy oil to a hot pan and fry the chopped ingredients. Add half cherry tomatoes, chopped black olives and salted capers. Cook to combine the flavours. In a separate pan, boiled dry spaghetti, another great store cupboard staple. When the pasta is tender but still firm, drain. Add to the sauce. With a splash of the water, it's full of starch, which gives a great silky consistency. Then season with pepper and top with basil. Packed with big, bold flavours and ready in under 20 minutes. Pasta with tomatoes, anchovy and chilies. My next deliciously different chilli recipe is grilled corn with Chipotle chilli butter. First, the topping. Chopped coriander. Then add softened butter. Soak chipotle chilies in hot water. These are dried jalapenos, which have an amazing smoky flavor. Drain and chop. Mix together and season. Next, fry corn on the cob in olive oil. You want a really wonderfully charred flavour. When coloured, add water to steam through. To eat, smother the cobs in the butter and crumble over Lancashire cheese. Fantastically messy to eat, grilled corn with Chipotle chilli butter, an utterly delicious smoky treat. My final recipe is a chilli classic. Jerk chicken. Start by making the intense jerk marinade. First, Scotch bonnet chilies. They may be small, but pack real heat and a fruity punch. Then chopped garlic. And fresh thyme. For spice, add ground cloves. Cinnamon, nutmeg, and allspice. Season with salt and pepper, and combine with olive oil. Next, score chicken legs so the hot, spicy flavours get deep inside the meat. Rub thoroughly with the jerk mix and marinade. Add olive oil to a hot dish. Brown the marinated chicken for 10 minutes. Then add Worcestershire sauce. Cover and cook in the oven at 220 degrees for 20 minutes.
Hot, spicy, jerk chicken, easy to make, and finger licking good. Three different chilies, three amazing flavors, three irresistible dishes. Nice. Next, five more of my 100 tips that will make your life easier in the kitchen. First up, how to de-seed chili. To get the seeds out, hold it upright and just rub the chili between your hands. The seeds are incredibly hot. You're just releasing them from the inside, tapping it down, and then again, just a final little rub. Now, cut the top off and then just open up and look, they come out like little miniature Smarties. And there, cut the little bottom bit off. Amazing. Next, a great tip for using spare chilies. Using string, tie together the stalks, then simply hang in your kitchen. In just a few weeks, you'll get your very own dried chilies. Great crumbled into dishes for adding heat on demand. Chilies are surprisingly versatile. If you love them in savory dishes, my tip is to try adding them to melty chocolate ganache for chocolate chili truffles, or sprinkled over fresh fruit like mango or watermelon. A great tip to prevent burning sensitive skin when working with chilies. To get rid of that spice and that heat on your fingers, a little bit of lemon, squeeze a little bit of lemon juice, and that instantly gets rid of the heat. Fresh lemon juice. Spice up your drinks. For a Mexican twist, add a dash of hot chili sauce to beer or using cocktails to give your drink a very different sort of kick. This is my ultimate cookery course. 100 recipes to stake your life on. I'll be showing you an amazing spicy beef salad. Take a little teaspoon of your dressing and just go over the beef. But first, the secret of cooking fantastic food is to start with great ingredients. The more you know personally about where your ingredients are from and how they're produced, the better. So don't be scared, ask lots of questions and learn. And when it comes to chilies, there's no one better to ask than chili grower Joanna Plum, who has been farming chilies from mild to mind-blowing for over 11 years. I eat chilies all the time, every single day. She grows over 60 types on her farm and really knows her poblanos from her habaneros. People think that chilies are all about heat. Actually, it's about flavour as well. Some are sweet, um, some are aromatic, and they can be used in so many different dishes. When you go shopping and you're looking for a chilli, what should you be looking for? What you want to do is look at the chilli and it needs to be nice and firm and glossy. Generally, the bigger the chilli, the milder it's going to be. The smaller the chilli, the hotter. And if it's small and wrinkly like this one, it's going to blow your socks off. Another way to tell if a chilli is hot or not is to split it open and smell it. If it's a super hot chilli, it'll clear your sinuses. The heat of a chilli comes from an oil called capsaicin and that is concentrated mainly at the top of the chilli where the seeds are. Now, when you're cooking with a chilli and you want the flavour of the chilli but not too much of the heat, start with just using the bottom of it. As you get closer to the seeds, that chilli is going to get hotter. So if you remove the seeds, that also does remove some of the heat. There's thousands of varieties out there because they cross-pollinate very, very easily. And that's why the world's hottest chilli is always changing. Joanna's right. With over 200 types available, all with different flavours, aromas and, of course, levels of heat, it's important to buy what you like. Here are my top chilies, whatever your desired kick. At the mild end, poblano. These are great for stuffing, have a delicate flavour and often used in Mexican dishes. Starting to get hot, the jalapeno. When they're green, they're like spicy bell pepper. The redder they are, the sweeter they are. Bird's eye, where they really start to pack a punch. Long, thin and pungent, they're great in Thai dishes and are often green or red. And at the top end, the habanero. These lantern-shaped demons have a delicious fruity taste and they're the firecracker of the chilli world. Another way to use chilies is to smoke them and to make chipotle. What it is, it's just a mesquite smoked red jalapeno. It smells fantastic. You can almost get that like smoky bacon sort of flavour out of it. So you would use this in anything that you would slow cook. 
So you're eating a chili and it's really too hot for you? The best way to get rid of that heat is to drink some milk or a dairy product like yogurt. Whatever you do, don't go for water or for beer. Don't be frightened of trying new types of chilies in your cooking. Experimenting with these amazing fiery beasts is a great excuse for getting hot-headed in the kitchen. They give you a natural high, much like when you've been exercising. So your endorphins are released and you just feel good. Chilies make you happy and they're also an aphrodisiac. Southeast Asian chefs, they're brilliant at balancing the hot spices of chili with sweet, sour and salty flavours. If you want a new twist on a favourite dish, spice it up with chili. My next recipe is super simple to make, but has wonderful depth and complexity of flavours, spicy beef salad. Chilies, if you use them confidently, they can really add a new dimension to the style of cooking. But the real trick is finding that balance of flavours that really suits you, because that's the most important part. So, this is the most amazing sirloin. You can see it's got that wonderful marble. For me, the secret behind this is cooking it quickly. Season the steaks generously. Salt and pepper. Push that seasoning in to the sirloin. Take the sirloin out of the fridge literally 20 minutes before you want to cook them so it gets up to room temperature. They cook more evenly, but more importantly, you can actually season right inside the steak. This little bit of fat down here, season that as well because that is what we want to roast and get that really nice and rendered. Olive oil in, a tablespoon. Roll that round as it starts to smoke in with the steaks. Into the pan and lay away. Again, into the pan and lay away. If you don't hear that noise, the minute those steaks hit the pan, don't put them in. So the secret now is getting that color on the steak, turning it once and once only, and cooking it for two and a half minutes each side. What I want to do is to get that bit of fat rendered so it adds a lot more flavor. Just hold the steak down like that. And that starts to melt the fat, which makes it so much more tender. There should be no white fat left anywhere. Turn them over. Really important to have that steak up to room temperature before you start cooking it. So the inside is nice and warm, so it spends less time in the pan and more time cooling down. Really important. Now, two fingers, touch, it goes in, so it's rare. I'm happy for them to be rare, because by the time I let them rest, they're going to go back to medium rare. It'll continue cooking. Out, onto a plate, and let them rest. One, two. Let's get my juices over. Don't waste that. Really important. Next, the spicy dressing. Take the seeds out of a chili to reduce the heat by rubbing it in your hands and tapping until the seeds fall out. Cut it in half and just chop it. In. Garlic and chili works brilliantly. A quick way of peeling it. Get your knife and just slam it down. It pops out very, very quickly. In. Little touch of salt. Rub. Start going around in circles first. You'll see it pureeing. Nice. Clear that off. Now we've got the heat in there from the chili and that richness from the garlic. Two teaspoons of palm sugar. This is where it starts to have that nice, sweet, sour effect. Fish sauce, fresh lime. This is a simple, fresh chili dressing, and it was something I fell in love with in Vietnam and Cambodia because it was just so easy. Give that a little mix and dissolve the sugar. Quick taste. Mm. Wow. Right, vegetables. A great fuss-free way to get super thin ribbons of carrot is to use a veg peeler. When they're that thin, they take the vinaigrette so much better. And radishes, just slice them down at an angle. Lovely. To give another dimension to the salad, I'm going to use a banana shallot. They are incredibly mellow, very sweet. Across, just chop up the shallot and mix that through. I want some sweetness in there now. Little vine tomatoes. Slice them in half. Tomatoes in. Shallot, radish, carrots and tomatoes. Next, peel and slice cucumber, chopped spring onions, 
and shred baby gem lettuce. And then finally, get some fresh mint. It's young mint, so you don't need to take all those stalks off. All you do is hold the bunch upside down and then take it for a little trim and just chop that once through. And you got that nice minted salad. A couple of tablespoons of dressing. Don't flood the salad with the dressing. You can always add, but we can't take it away. Now really mix that dressing in there. Make sure all that chili and garlic and palm sugar wraps around that salad. Beautiful. Onto the plate. The steak's rested. It's now nice and medium rare. That little bit of fat, we don't want to find that in the salad. Just slice that off. That served its purpose. It's kept that steak nice and moist. Just slice. Going with the grain, it's almost like slicing through butter. And look, inside, beautiful, pink. You slice the beef too thinly, then it goes stone cold. And more importantly, all the goodness runs out of it. Nice, thick slices. Get the beef and start placing it around the salad. Take a little teaspoon of your dressing. The rest of your salad, sit that on top. And we'll finish it off with some toasted peanuts. Peanuts in. Now those nuts are really toasted. Nuts on. Get another pan and just crush. Once they've cooled down, just run them through with a knife. You can hear how crunchy they are. Another texture, another taste of the salad. And then from there, sprinkle. And then finally, take that. Just finish it with a little tablespoon of that sauce. And there is one tasty, very well textured, spicy beef salad. Follow my ultimate cookery course crammed with key lessons. Top tips and 100 recipes to stake your life on, and you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on, get cooking. Adding big, gutsy flavors using spices at the beginning of cooking and then simply letting the dish slow cook is a brilliant way of getting maximum flavor with minimum effort. My first recipe melts in the mouth. And because the oven does most of the work, it's a cinch to make. Slow-cooked, fiery lamb. Cooking is all about being bold and adventurous. And this dish is exciting because it's slowly cooked. And the longer it cooks, the more flavorsome it becomes. Marinating the lamb first. Chilies, we're going to use a mixture of red and green. Take off the tops and just slice in. Garlic, crushed. Don't worry about chopping these ultra fine, just get it in there. Cooking for up to three hours, everything sort of blends and almost sort of purees itself together. Smoked paprika, goes brilliantly well with the chilies. Two teaspoons in, a touch of dried oregano. Some little cumin seeds, the blend and the fragrance that they give out is extraordinary. They release a little oil as well and helps to tenderize the lamb. Touch of salt, pepper, cinnamon. That sort of sweetens up the lamb. Olive oil, just a tablespoon. And the olive oil helps to sort of stick all those wonderful spices to the lamb. Jump in, just start really rubbing. At this stage, you can leave the lamb to marinate for anything from half an hour to overnight, allowing the spices to really penetrate the meat, giving amazing results when you tuck in. Delicious. Vegetables, carrots and onions. And that's it. Sliced. Secret of slicing vegetables for braising is not getting too thin. You slice the onions too thin, they burn. You've got that horrible char taste on that slow braised. Braising is just a chef's term that means cooking in liquid on a low heat, making the meat incredibly moist and beautifully tender. So the secret of braising is having a really nice, thick, durable pan. Get that nice and hot. Just a touch of olive oil. Lamb in, hold the bone, because you're in control then, into the pan. I want that white fat 
to start rendering, so it'll add more fat, therefore making it a lot more flavoursome as it braises. Chilies, cinnamon, in, mix that up. And don't be scared, you're not burning this, you're sort of searing the lamb shanks, and this is the important part right at the very beginning. We're getting the colour on the lamb, which washes off as it braises in the oven, so be generous with that colour. Vegetables in. Wow. And then a couple of bay leaves. So now you lift the lamb up and get the lamb sat on top of the vegetables. Now, you glaze the pan with red wine. Deglazing means that you're, you're cleaning the bottom of the pan and you're getting that amazing flavour washed off and lifted up into that sauce. It can really transform that dish. Always deglaze. Then bring to the boil and cook for about 10 minutes to reduce. The wine's reduced down by half. Now for the stock. Bring that stock back up to the boil and then into the oven. Now, don't cover it. When you cover it, all the condensation comes off the lid. Your lamb becomes grey. All this effort and that exciting spice gets washed away. No lid and into the oven for three hours. A slow cook on a low heat of 160 degrees gives the spices time to work and transform the meat so it's mouth-wateringly tender. Now, look at those. Out on to a plate. You can just see that meat sliding down. Juicy and incredibly tender. Grab it by the, the shank, roll them around that rich, delicious sauce. Look at that. You can get your sauce. Nice. Beautiful. Just get some mint. Don't chop it. Just pick that fresh mint and let it snow. And there you go. A very spicy, delicious, melting in the mouth, lamb shank. Amazing. To get the most out of your spices, there's only one piece of kit that you need. Pestle and mortar. I mean, they look fantastic and it's essential for any good kitchen. These things are so versatile. These ancient kitchen tools are perfect for everything, from pestos to dressings, and cost them around 15 quid. Use to grind spices and you'll max out on flavour. Get perfect textures and always be totally in control. Make sure you've got a nice, large circumference of the bowl so you can grind away. The heavier and the more durable they are, the more confidence it gives you when you're pounding. And there's almost a way of confirming homemade, hand-pounded. Grab yourself a pestle and mortar and soon you'll be spicing with ease. Spices are a brilliant way to add an extra layer and a depth of complexity to any dish. Learning to use them properly will really improve your cooking. Here are three more of my super simple spice recipes to get you going. First up, a very easy chilli and spice white bait. Start with the spice coating. Toast Szechuan peppercorns and coriander seeds in a hot, dry pan to release their flavours. Add chilli flakes and grind in a pestle and mortar to make a fiery, fine powder. Combine with plain flour, season and mix. Add olive oil to a hot pan. Coat white bait in the spicy flour mix, then fry. White bait are an oily fish that are healthy, delicious and cook in minutes. Once golden, they're done. Fantastic with garlic mayonnaise or a simple squeeze of lemon. Ready in under 10 minutes, chilli and spice white bait, an easy, simple, spicy dish. My next amazingly aromatic recipe is roasted squash hummus. Start with my take on Raz Al Hanout, a classic Moroccan spice blend. In a dry pan, toast cinnamon, cloves, coriander, fenugreek and fennel seeds. Then add mustard seeds and cumin. When the seeds start to pop, they're ready. Add paprika and grind into a fine powder. For the hummus, peel and chop butternut squash. Put on a baking tray and add garlic, simply bashed, and chopped ginger. 
drizzle with olive oil, season, and sprinkle over the spice mix. Then roast in a hot oven for half an hour until soft. Allow to cool and place in a blender. Add tahini, a nutty paste made from sesame seeds, cooked chickpeas, a dash of lemon juice, and a drizzle of olive oil. Blitz until luxuriously creamy and textured. Spices toasted for maximum flavor. Amazing roasted squash hummus. My final deliciously spicy dishes, curry spice sweet corn soup. First, the fragrant curry paste. Roast coriander and cumin seeds until aromatic. Then grind, adding crushed garlic, chili powder, turmeric, and finely chopped ginger. Bring together with olive oil to form a thick paste. For the soup, fry finely chopped onions in olive oil. Add the curry paste and cook to release the flavors. Add cubed potatoes, chicken stock, and season. When the potato has softened, stir in cream corn. Then add whole sweet corn kernels with some of the juices and transfer to a blender and blitz until smooth. For texture, add more whole sweet corn. Heat and it's ready to serve. Wonderfully satisfying curried spice sweet corn soup that packs an amazingly aromatic punch. Three more stunning recipes that make cooking with spice simple. Incredible. Welcome back to my ultimate cookery course. This is my guide to cooking with spice. Next up, my shopping guide to buying spices. When I buy my spice, I only want the best, and it always pays to get expert advice. Birgit Erath has been selling every spice under the sun in London's Notting Hill for over 20 years, so she really knows what she's talking about. I love spices, the smell, the texture, the colour. Spices are so versatile. Something very, very simple can be really transformed into something really delicious. With thousands of aromatic ingredients on her shelves, if it smells good, she sells it. If you buy spices, buy them whole. Then you can try roast them, grind them when you need them, and then they will release the essential oils. Whole spices you can keep for years. Give them a good bushing <laughs> wine bottle with your rolling pin or whatever, and you see there is still aroma, and you can taste it, you smell it, then it's fine. There's four main spices. One is sweet, one is sour, one is bitter, and one is hot. This is cinnamon. And that is really a great example of a sweet spice. When you buy a cinnamon quill like this, you have to check that you have loads of different layers in here. Then you can either grind this or you'd break a piece off. I mean, this doesn't smell of anything now, but if you roll it in your hand, just quickly like this, and then you smell it again. This is just unbelievable. If you have spaghetti bolognese, put a pinch of cinnamon in it to bring out the flavor. Sumac, this is one of those really special spices. Sour, like a lemon, but it has a salty aftertaste. I use this anywhere from marinades to salad. You haven't lived unless you tried it. A great example for a bitter spice would actually be uh, turmeric. This is actually a root. It grows in the ground like ginger. Use it very, very sparingly. About that much will actually color you a curry or a rice dish, wonderful yellow. Watch your fingers, you get really yellow fingers from it. And then we come to the hot spices. One spice that I couldn't miss, and that is Hungarian paprika. Paprika is the powdery form of a bell pepper. What makes the Hungarian paprika different is that they actually grow it on vineyards. It's sort of between the vines. It has a, a sweetness and it has a sharpness to it. I have it in ice cream, I have it on fish, I have it everywhere. Birgit's spot on about the power of spices to transform dishes, whether savoury or sweet. Here's my quick guide to the spices I use most. Black pepper, 
This is the spice I couldn't do without. Always buy it whole and grind yourself so you get the freshest flavor. Cardamom. These pods come in green or black types and have a fantastic spicy sweet taste. Brilliant for everything from curries to rice dishes and puddings. Coriander. These citrusy seeds are perfect whole in pickles or grind to use in fragrant stews and soups. Cumin, a savory spice that's pungent and nutty. It's great in marinades for delicious meat and fish. Then cinnamon, sweetly fragrant and great with apples or in cakes. And nutmeg, warm and spicy, it's delicious in a bechamel sauce. Finally, saffron. These sweet strands infuse a brilliant bright red color and are great in risottos, and even though it's more expensive than gold, a pinch goes a long, long way. Store your spices properly, and they'll last for years. You keep it airtight in a tin or in a glass jar in your cupboard. Don't be scared of spices, like an aftershave or a perfume. You have to select it yourself. It has to fit in with your taste and with your kitchen. Supermarkets and good local shops sell an amazing array of different spices, so there's no excuse for not being adventurous. Be bold, find what you like, and spice up your cooking. Like all chefs, I love the challenge of transforming classic recipes, giving them a new twist to make them modern and vibrant. To keep old dishes fresh and exciting, it's great to get spicy. My next recipe is a time-honored British classic, but with the addition of spices, it's given a new lease of life, fragrant spice rice pudding. I love cooking with spices, but you don't have to just cook savory dishes. Using aromatics and spices across desserts takes your puddings to a completely different level. First off, our spices. This is a fresh vanilla pod, fragrant and packed full of flavor. Use the back of the knife and flatten it. That removes all those little seeds off the skin of the vanilla pod. Take your knife, slice down the middle, and then when you open that up, the smell is incredible. Take the tip of the knife and you scrape inside and look, all those seeds dying to come out. That is incredible. There are thousands of seeds still ingrained to the pod, so put them in to the casserole. Cardamom, powerful, spicy. Take two little pods, place your knife on top, and lightly crack them. Cracking the cardamom pods helps release all the amazing flavor. Cloves, gives it that kind of aniseed flavor with a lot of depth. One, two, three. Cinnamon stick, snap and in. Just smelling that level of fragrance, you can imagine what the rice pudding's gonna taste of. Turn on the heat, lightly toast those spices just a couple of seconds. And what's gonna happen is just gonna sort of enhance those spices in a way that it just draws out an even more powerful fragrance. Coconut milk in. Sugar, two tablespoons. Milk. And then a couple of tablespoons of cream. Bring it slowly to the boil to allow the flavors to infuse. And this rice pudding reminds me of my time in India, where I got really into that chai tea fragrance because it was just so delicious and so comforting. Take a lime in. The lime just cuts through the richness of the coconut. Gives it that nice little bit of acidity. Goes fantastically well with the cinnamon. And that fresh vanilla, nice. Have a taste. Mm. Now, let's come up to the boil. Give it a nice little clean round the outside and in with the rice. Use 200 grams of pudding rice. Don't wash it beforehand because the starch helps thicken the rice pudding in the oven. And just turn that down to a light simmer. And the pudding rice starts to open up and it absorbs all that coconut, vanilla, cardamom, clove, and cinnamon. Bring it up to the ball gently and cook it out for three to five minutes. Boiling it rapidly, the rice opens up and it goes into mush. So we want to keep that nice texture of that sort of fragrant rice pudding on a gentle simmer. Next, a little luxury. I'm going to show you how I take this simple, delicious, aromatic rice pudding to a completely different level. Here's what I do. Take two egg yolks, separate them. Now give that a really nice whisk. Two nice tablespoons of mascarpone cheese. 
We start into the egg yolks. Just as nice and smooth. It's almost like finishing the rice pudding in a delicious custard. Turn off the gas, add that into the rice pudding. And what happens, it starts to enrich and really thicken this rice pudding and takes it to a completely different level. The rice is still not cooked, but it's starting to go nice and soft. You can just see how it's opening up. But look, it's like rich, aromatic lava bubbling away. Finally, great more citrus zest. The lime on top. Roasted, caramelized lime zest on top of a rice pudding is phenomenal. Then put it in the oven for 15 minutes at 200 degrees to finish cooking the rice and develop the intensely aromatic flavors. Look at that. An incredibly fragrant rice pudding. How beautiful does that look? Spices are a brilliant way of helping classic dishes come alive. I'll guarantee you'll never, ever have had a rice pudding like this before. Next, my tricks of the trade and kitchen tips. First, how to zest a lemon. The important part is not to zest any of the pith. Watch the following technique and I'll show you how. We've got these original graters. Really important when we use this, we use the, the fine zester. Not the big rough one, not the one for slicing, and not the other one for grating. This little one here. Onto a plate, because it's always easier to lift off from the plate than it is the board. And the most important thing about zesting a lemon is nice long strokes, but twisting the lemon round. Every time we go down, we twist. Same with the orange and same with the lime. Little tap. If you go too far, let me just show you. Look, you've got that white, bitter pith that destroys the wonderful, zesty flavour. And look, that's what we're looking for there. This really nice, vibrant lemon zest. Delicious. Garlic is a key ingredient in so many spicy dishes. My tip for finely chopping and mincing is to add a pinch of salt for abrasion, which helps break the fibres of the garlic down for a much better result. For getting the most out of root ginger, simply remove the skin using a teaspoon. It's easier than using a knife, and you can get around the tricky bits. Or just keep the skin on and give it a good wash. Never throw out vanilla pods. There's a ton of flavor left in the skin. Stick inside jars of sugar and leave to infuse. Great to sprinkle on cakes, biscuits, or porridge. When grinding up spices, if you have any left over, you can store it in an airtight jar for up to two months. Great for a spicy kick to have at your fingertips. Follow my ultimate cookery course crammed with key lessons. Top tips and 100 recipes to stake your life on, and you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on, get cooking.